Dude, I'm getting adjusted. The office doesn't have a door yet. Oh, it's, it's still a little echoey for sure. The office doesn't have a door yet. So the cats, I can't stop them from coming in. And then uh, this morning, I was, I was in the bathroom. I don't need to tell you what I was doing in there. We all do it approximately once a day. I was having a bowel movement. Ruka meowed outside the door for like half an hour. And then I heard him like scratching and clawing some stuff. So I, you know, cleaned myself up and got out there. And he had opened my filing cabinet and clawed out like my tax returns and just like put them on the floor and then scratch the hell out of them. Like, I don't know what's, I, we're getting like a glass partition installed, but holy cow, like it's, they, I can't keep them out. And then they don't want to be in here alone. But as soon as I'm in here, they're like, I gotta see, I gotta be here immediately. Here, go, you, you, you go down, go down. Tomo, go down. How's cable management? I owe my wife a great debt of gratitude. First off, without her, uh, my stupid brain could not have built the desk in the first place. That's like a given. It's a common question, and I'm sure my wife will echo this, I guess pun intended, on her own stream. Why are furniture instructions so bad? This desk, I, here's what I think part of the problem is. This desk had five steps, but it didn't have five steps. Every step was a compound step. So step one would be like put in eight screws and do this. Step two would be like put in 12 screws and then do this. So like, I don't understand. I guess the first thing is they want you to see it as like, you know, oh, it's only five steps. That's no big deal. But what they should do is do it programmer style. And it's like step one is like, you know, read all the instructions, look at the specs. Step two is like, look at all the materials that you got. And then every single step is like one thing. No, there shouldn't be a step one that has two sub steps. A sub step should just be the step. Anyway, we got the screws in the base of the desk. Then we had to, I don't know how to describe this to begin with. It's like my word cell brain going up against my shape rotator, like lack of intelligence. Imagine, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. Imagine a rectangle flat on the ground with four screws on the short sides on the left and right. There is another uh, board that went across that through the midline perpendicularly that had three screws coming out. And then to, to finish building the legs of the desk, you had to insert the piece of wood in such a way that it would go into, listen, okay? Imagine, an, I can't, I, I need to, hang on, start menu, paint. How do you use paint? I'm not XQC. I've decided that I don't care about the diagram. I'm just gonna close MS Paint. <laughs> anyway, long story short, the instructions were bad and then my wife said, I'm not going to build it like this because this shit is impossible. And then she just said, let's just build the desk in two parts and then we'll just slot it together. And that's exactly what we did. We, she, I am not good at this. So I have to do the instructions step by step. And when the instructions are bad, then I'm screwed. She is a genius with this like shape rotator stuff. So she just looks at it and goes, oh, it goes together like this. I would rather not follow the instructions and then just do it the, the way that it seems like best to do it for me. So this was all about cable management. Kate wants to see, sure. I, I, hang on, here we go. Hello, hello. You can't see, it's gonna look very similar. This wall behind me is so much further away than the other one. Now I think I should remove the paper shredder from the vicinity here. I think I, the printer, whatever, but hang on, let me, let me remove this paper shredder. You don't need to see the paper shredder. There's no point there. Anyway, my cable management's great because my wife did all the cable management. That's the answer to your question. Not only did she do all the cable management, but then she zip tied it. So it's like locked in place forever. 
because she knows that I would not do it. I would just plug everything in as much as possible or as fast as possible. I'm a big ally. Like, um, I am, uh, we don't have a very uh, heteronormative relationship. Last night, my wife built the furniture with just a little bit of help from me, basically just when she needed a little extra muscle. And then she assembled all the electronics. And I said, you know what? I'm not good at any of this. So I just defaulted to the childcare. I said, I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna feed our baby dinner. I'm gonna give our baby a, a bath and then I'm gonna send our baby to bed and read her a story. We're in like an, an inverted 1950s Pleasantville relationship. <laughs> <laughs> now we are still on Wi-Fi. The Cat5 cable is coming today. I was not on Wi-Fi the old place. I was on uh, Wired, but the Wi-Fi, the, the internet jack was right next to my PC. In this place, the internet jack is 25 feet away. So I, need a, I needed a longer cable. So it might be a little fucked up today, but whatever. It's a Tuesday in July. You know, it's not the Super Bowl. It's Cat 5, fucking Cat 6. Oh, oh, it's not fucking gold-plated. Oh, oh, it's not even gold-plated. It's not even a monster cable. Do you hear yourself? You're going to alter the lighting in the room at all? I don't think so. Because it's just like it's my house. Like, this isn't like Toby Gamer's goon cave, you know? It's... <laughs> this is my house. Like, if people are going to come over and, like, see my house, I might get a ring light or something like that, but that's about it. I'm not gonna put on like RGB or anything like that because we just moved. So if my ass ever has to move again, like I don't wanna have to pull down 17 key lights and fucking Elgato stream, multi-mount, teleprompter, like I got it looking like Infowars up in here or something like that. This looks fake. You are experiencing Dissociation. You need to talk to a doctor. This is not what it looks like, by the way. The gain on the camera is messed up, but I don't know how to alter that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> you got to get some plants in here. You get, you, it's driving me crazy. We've been moving nonstop for like three weeks. People are like, there's no plants behind you? Yeah, because we've been establishing you know, the rest of the house with every second of every day. Yeah, it's not built. This is why like when a restaurant shuts down in your neighborhood and then you see like a sign go up that's like a new restaurant is coming soon. It, it doesn't open in like a week. They got to like rip out a bunch of stuff. It takes forever. They got to order new stuff. It takes a hundred years to come in. The view we have of your background should be a priority. You should know by now that I don't really care about your perception. Of the stuff that doesn't matter. Of the stuff that matters, like, sure. If you're like, oh, the stream sucked ass today. I'm like, oh, that hurts. If you're like, oh, the wall is taupe. It should be like magenta and then have like a spotlight underneath it that looks warm. And then your name in like LED lights behind it. You gotta get a life, honestly. By the way, check this out. Hang on, hang on. I don't know if you can hear all this. Just give me a second. Scream. I'm on the other side of the room. Can you hear this? Ooh, it's a refrigerator. Ooh. That's a damn sink. How about you ready for this? That's a toilet. How about this? Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. How about this? I don't know if you can hear that one. That one was a shower. So if Kate gets mad at me, she can just lock me down here and I could, I could survive in solitary confinement. That bid just cost you five bucks. 
it's not even the five bucks. It's going to cost me like a thousand dollars in people being mad at me for flushing the toilet because I wasted some water. Even though it's, it, 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 listen, we use, the, we recycle like 99.99% of the water in Vancouver that passes through the water treatment plant. So it's like, I wasted like a milliliter of water overall. Where's the Peloton? It's right here. It's just out of frame. I wanted to see it. I promise you, I, I can see it. It's right there. Can you put it in frame? No, it's fucking, you don't exist. Sorry, you don't exist. That motherfucker right there is not real. You don't need to see the bike. What, see the bike just so you can forget that you're seeing the bike every two seconds? I can't put the bike in the frame because as soon as I put the bike in the frame, as soon as I move the bike out of the frame, people are going to be like, where's the bike? Then I put the bike in the frame. Nobody talks about the bike at all. Nobody even mentions it. Then I move it out of the frame. People lose their minds. Where's the bike? Where's the bike? Change. I don't like change. Doesn't make any damn sense. So anyway, here we go. We're going to get started. I'm mostly I'm just spinning up bitrate here. I'm it has been doing okay on Wi-Fi, but I will say yesterday I tried to upload two videos and they got to like 20% on YouTube and then my internet connection just basically kicked me off. I think that my ISP said like, what the hell? Something soaked up the whole pipe. New webcam angle? You guys need to like, you need something in your life to care about. I'm sorry. <laughs> The desk is taller. The desk is like four inches taller. It's just, this is not Christopher Nolan, you know? You know, it's just, it just came together. The stream ended. I ripped all this shit out of my old office, put it in my car, drove to daycare with like a minute to spare, picked up my daughter, drove back here, took all this shit out of the car into the new place, helped my wife build her desk, helped my wife build my desk, fixed, uh, put all the shit back on the desk, hooked it up, put all the shit back on her desk, hooked it up, made dinner, fed it to my child, gave my kid a bath, put her to bed, went to bed myself, woke up at 6 a.m., worked out, made breakfast for my kid, and then here we are. That said that there was, there was no time for, let me stop by Elgato.com and buy an RGB uh, light. Let me, let me buy a, I don't even know what they make these days for streamers. It's prime day though. Yo, really? Hang on. Prime day. Cause I do still need to buy a TV, but it's kind of pissing me off because I want the TV to arrive like today. But every time I try to order one, they're like, it's not going to come till next week. And I'm like, nobody's got time for that. But then it's like a week later and I still don't have a TV. Go to Costco. I can't fit the, I can't fit the TV in my car. I know because I tried. I went to Best Buy after buying a TV online for pickup. And then the dude looked at my car and said, there's no shot. This is fitting in there. And I said, okay, can you deliver it? He said, no problem. Then we went back into the Best Buy and they were like, hey, we don't have a truck big enough to deliver the TV to your house. We have to send it from our warehouse, which means you have to cancel your order and then go order it again from the website instead of the store. How did, why do they call it Best Buy when you put the TV out of the in? You know what I'm saying? Oh, how about this? LG up to 48% off LG OLED TVs. Shit's still too expensive. I want, I want a big TV, but I don't want it to cost this much money. Also, why did it, I don't, I don't know. Wait, whatever happened to just color TV? Nowadays, you see in this LG C3 OLED Evo 77 4K smart TV, AI powered Alexa built in gaming, 120 Hertz refresh, HDMI 2.1, FreeSync, G Sync, VRR, WebOS, slim design. I don't know what the hell any of this, what does it mean, dude? The hell does it mean? It's good? It better be good. It's $4,272. I'm not buying that. Are you crazy? What does it mean, Basil? 
LG OLED A2 48 inch Alexa built in 4K Smart TV 3840 times 2160 AI powered 4K Dolby Cinema WISA ready cloud gaming 48 inches. What does AI powered mean, man? <laughs> Here's what's bothering me. We want a 75 inch TV. A 65 inch TV is like $1,500. And a 75 inch TV is like $17,000. What are they putting in the extra 10 inches that makes it so expensive? They're putting like pure gold in there? More AI. That's the chat GPT module. By the way, can I just say, I, I, I haven't had this, the bandwidth to make this, but in my head, here's how good AI is, okay? So on Bing, I searched Michael Jackson, Jobs Gone video. When I searched it, Top result on search, the exact YouTube video I want. It forced a Bing AI window to the side that said, hey, it looks like you're referencing a debunked urban legend that Michael Jackson fired his musical director um, because he flubbed the sound during a rehearsal. And I'm like, listen, you idiot, you already got me the right answer. You're so stupid, you don't even know that you answered the question right. And I was like, it's not debunked. I, maybe he didn't fire the guy, but at the same time, like, the video's right there. You're the one who showed it to me. A 75-inch 4K Scepter TV is only $1,000. Here's the other problem. I mean, I'm just basically describing the plight of the consumer. I don't want... I want a reputable brand... Because I got a TCL, which is like a mid-tier brand for our old TV. And it sometimes I'll just be watching it and it just turns off. I don't know if it's like a forced software update or something like that. But when we bought it, I was like, I don't want to spend a lot of money on a TV. So rather than getting like an LG or a Samsung or a Sony or something like that, I got a TCL and it was super cheap. But like... Every once in a while, it'll just turn off. And I don't mind it for me, but like when my parents are over and my dad's watching like the news and it just turns off, I feel like I've disappointed him as a son. I feel he's like, why? Did, I thought my son was doing okay, but here his TV just randomly turns off for some reason. Like what's going on? I don't mind when I face, you know, mild inconveniences like that. I can just shrug it off. But when people that rely on me experience it as a result of my spendthriftness, it, it, it hurts a little bit. So I want a, like a reputable TV, but I also don't want it to be like $3,500 because I'm like, TVs are supposed to be cheap now. How much bigger in area is a 75-inch TV versus a 65-inch TV? It's like 10 inches around, like Stifler, right? It's like, tw oh, percentage. That's a good way to think about it. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Why 75 inch? Well, because we got like a, I think we got like a 45 inch right now. And we got it sitting in like the TV hole in our new house. And it just looks like, it looks, you know what it looks like? It looks like when we took photos for our daughter's first birthday. And I got fitted for a hanbok, the, the Korean traditional outfit. And then they were like, what's your waist size? And I was like 32. And they were like, really? And I was like, I'm, I know, I know. I know, it does, I don't look like a 32, but I'm a 32. And then I put on the hanbok that they got me and I was like, I'm not a 32. This feels horrible. And then they were like, how does it feel? And I said, feels perfect. That was, that was in the pre-Peloton era. <laughs> Can't let them win. Exactly. They thought I wasn't a 32. That's right. I was not a 32, but I can't let them know that. I can't let them know that they knew my waist size better than I knew my waist size when it's my waist. Anyway, I don't know. We'll buy a TV, but I'm not going to buy it today. This shit's too expensive. Maybe I'll wait like 10 years. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not paying 2300 bucks for a 55-inch TV. That's, like a, that's embarrassing. Search Amazon. 75-inch TV minus TCL. Samsung 7... See, like, how are you supposed to know which TV is which, man? You need... I need Tom's hardware. Why would I buy a $2,800 LCD... Or, sorry, LG TV 
Wait, look at this. Samsung 70-inch class crystal UHD CU7000 series, pure color, object tracking, sound light, Q Symphony, 4K upscaling, HDR gaming hub, smart TV with Alexa built in. Crystal UHD is the bad brand? What the hell, man? Samsung 75-inch class QLED, 4K Q60C series, quantum HDR, motion accelerator, gaming hub, smart TV with Alexa built in, Canada version, parentheses 2023. You don't want QLED, you want OLED? What the hell? 70-inch TV, OLED. They even make these in Canada? What about ULED? Hisense 75U78H 75 inch smart 4K ULED 120 hertz Dolby Vision HDR 10 plus Google TV with quantum dot technology Canada model. What does it mean? I don't know fucking QLED, OLED, HDR. I don't know what any of this means. Sony 75 inch X85K 4K. Is it, is it 4K or is it X85K? HD, HDR, LED, smart Google TV with Dolby Vision and Atmos, 2022 model. And then there's one right below it. It's an extra $100. Sony 75 inch 4K Ultra HD TV X90K, Bravia XR full array LED, smart Google TV with Dolby Vision HDR and exclusive features for the PlayStation 5. Not the PlayStation, the PlayStation with an E. It's summers in Italy. I want to, here's the problem. Chad surmised it very well. I want a good TV, but I don't want to pay the price that they're asking for it. 81 inch OLED LG TV. Chad told me not to buy an OLED or I'm an idiot. We, oh no, wait, OLED is good. QLED is bad. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> But all I do when I buy a new TV anyway is like I set it up and then I go to Netflix and I watch like three minutes of Planet Earth in 4K and I go like, oh, holy fuck. And then I just go to my cable box and put on like whatever's on HBO <laughs> and watch it for like eight minutes and then leave. That's it. Peppa Pig, exactly. Mommy doesn't know daddy's getting hot. At the hobby shop, watching Dragon Ball Broly. She be popping locks while she getting it. She be sweating it, and she sucking it slowly. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think my neighbors can still hear me, so I'm should probably relax on that. But this should be at work right now. So sick of that song. It's probably the best song of this year so far, in my opinion. Probably came out last summer, but in my opinion, it's the best song of this year. Mommy doesn't know daddy's getting hot at the coffee shop, drinking latte so foamy. Sure, that's pretty good. That could definitely, that could, that's like Weird Al. And I mean that in a positive way. Hey, I was thinking of this, by the way. I don't know if people are going to agree with this. I, I have a new segment I like to call Would This Tweet Go Off, okay? Here's this tweet. Chat, vote on whether this tweet would go off. Here is the, tw the tweet, and I quote, <clears throat> Was Mrs. Renfro that bitch? End quote. Take, don't, don't say anything yet. Let it simmer for 20 seconds, and then just think about it. Getting a lot of negative twos. Was Mrs. Renfro that bitch? I don't know who that is. She's the salsa lady. Okay, I got another one. Me at the grocery store. Mrs. Renfro and Newman's Own are definitely fucking. I got a lot of salsa-based tweets here. Me in the salsa aisle. Do you think Mrs. Renfro and Newman's Own are fucking? <laughs> so, th oh, that's a lot of plus twos, man. Newman's own is an actual guy. I, that's why it's so funny. Calling Paul Newman Newman's own is a is a humorous sentence. Slash marker. Go new heights. Oh, oh I, slash marker doesn't work because I didn't put a space in it. Oh, fuck you. <clears throat> oh, NL doesn't play new games. All he knows how to do is uh, 
eat hot chip and play super auto pets wrong we're playing a new game it's called new heights okay and i'm in a new room so it's a perfect opportunity for that i'm getting slandered by the way this is not only up to you do not just like run and jump through nfts okay this is and i'm not even messing with you people are popping out of the woodwork to say i'm sick of this streamer bait it's not streamer bait it's a it's a rock climbing video game it's not only up to so look steam New Heights, okay? Let me read you the description here rather than making it up myself. New Heights, realistic climbing and bouldering. Experience free solo climbing and bouldering like never before. Go above and beyond on real cliffs and structures. Improve your skills, travel the world, and compete against your friends from the safety of your computer. Here's the developer's mission statement. We want to create experience that is as close as possible to real life climbing and bouldering with optimal controls. Early access allows us to launch the core of the game while we gradually add cliffs and buildings from all over the world. Top reviews, 100% positive reviews by the way. A true innovation, this is a simulation of climbing in the same way that modern sim racing games are a simulation of car racing. They laser scan tracks, create a car and tire model and let you the gamer do the rest. For new heights, the devs have taken the same approach. They visited and scanned real-world locations and created a model climber to interact with the environment in a natural way. See, like this is it's not streamer bait. It's not straight, it's not. Did you see the tweet that was that old ad for uh, Indiana Jones? Uh, the Last Crusade, and it said, the man with the hat is back. And this time he brought his father. And then the quote tweet was like, me when I take two ambience. Anyway, that one got me pretty good. Eklo, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. We're going to start playing here. <laughs> Traveling to Rachel's gym. It's not my tweet. It's a great tweet. It's not my tweet. Holy cow. You, you want to get as much verticality as possible on this? I'm insane. Look at that. Hold to release all limbs. It, what's crazy is that people will be like, oh, this is like what... Um, this is streamer bait. Oh, the controls are like quap. Bro, the controls are like the way that you control your body. I don't want to cross you up too bad, but like... <laughs> this is... You ever think about how complex it is to actually like move your arms or like... It, it blows my mind every time I like throw or catch a baseball. You know how complex it is to like see someone 75 feet away and then have your brain be like, oh yeah, I know exactly how much power and like the angle and the exact order of like uh, musculature firing that I need to yeet the ball of this weight over there. That's crazy, man. You got to grab here. By the way, I'm, I've rock climbed a little bit in real life. I'm horrible at it. So probably surprising nobody, but... It's, it's very much not my area of expertise. This doesn't, like, for example, this doesn't look like a good way to climb this wall, but it does look like daddy's getting hot at the hobby shop watching Dragon Ball Broly. It's, it's not the way you do this in real life. <laughs> oh, that's a no shift, no shift. Okay, go, go. Oh, Rachel, shattered pelvis. Okay, okay. By the way, I, I, I do want to say I am left-handed. Until uh, maybe last year, my right hand was always stronger. So why would I say that I'm left-handed? Well, because I write with my left hand. And that's what we've decided is the ultimate indicator of your handedness. But I don't know if anybody else here uh, has to carry a toddler all the time. For some reason, carrying a toddler... This is my left, by the way. The camera's mirrored. Carrying a toddler on the left just feels more natural. So I've, I've started doing strength workouts again for the first time in a few years. And for the first time in my life, my left arm is now stronger than my right arm. I don't know it, when the, the shift happened, but it used to be if I was doing like bicep curls, the left would always fatigue first. But now the left is like going steady and the right is like, please, please. Lefty's just better for, for carrying a toddler because it leaves your, your right hand open to like punch a coyote in the face if you have to. I think it's something like that. 
That, that's the wrong. You should put that back down there. You should just use your hand for that one. You're being a little bit too ambitious with this one, Rachel. No disrespect. I mean, I know it's your gym. You can do whatever you want here. But like, I'm, I, I think I'm kind of getting it. Direction and how good your support is for that hand or foot. Oh, do it, do it. Oh, she's crazy. Oh, come on. You got, oh, you got no core strength, Rachel. She's got a mean heel hook. I know nothing about um, climbing. Every once in a while when, well, not every once in a while. Every time I take my daughter to the playground, I wait until there's no kids on like the monkey bars. And then I do like a few pull-ups just to keep myself honest. But like if you had to, if you asked me to boulder a wall or, or do some rock climbing, it's definitely not my, my strong suit. It's not my area of expertise. Let's put it that way. I've never been a climber. I think like I was a little chubby as a kid, which is the, the best era for you as a climber is when you're a child. You just have like a physiological advantage because you don't weigh very much. So I never got good at climbing as a kid. And then as an adult, it just like, you know, you're starting from behind the eight ball. Children are crazy at rock climbing. It's insane. Like, um, I'm telling you, I, you know, in Las Vegas, they have that like dead hang thing where if you can hold it for a hundred seconds or something, you win a hundred dollars, but the thing's all greasy and it spins around. I bet they have a maximum or a minimum age limit to it. Cause if you put like a seven year old on there, it's like Lego hands. They just go, you, you could come back in half an hour and they'd still be there. It makes like a perfect seal. They die from the fall. You don't have to worry about it because they're not falling. Their arms are not strong, but like they weigh so little. You need to get some key lights though. Natural lighting in your room. But shut up, buddy. You live in Ohio, okay? Stop pretending to be like a, a key grip in Southern California. Your ass lives in Dayton. There's nothing wrong with it. Why are you acting like there's something wrong with it? Beautiful. Go right hand here. See, this is where, like, I went rock climbing at a couple birthday parties as a kid. This is about where I gave up. When it was just a bunch of things to grab onto and you were basically just climbing like a vertical staircase, that's no problem. Once they start doing like, hey, here, hey, if you get stuck on this one, you can shove your uh, middle finger into a little crack in the rock and then sustain your whole body weight on top of it. And then you just do like a hoop, 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 hoop. And then you swing yourself upside down. And I'm like, brother, no shot. Absolutely. I, I, you can catch me on the, on the bunny hill all day, every day. Can I, can I say something? And I want to start by saying that I have complete ignorance in this domain, but I'm just, I'm asking a question. Those of us out there who are avid rock climbers, are there a lot of insane people that climb rocks? So I, I, my hunch is that you meet a lot of normal people, but you also meet a lot of people who hypothetically are planning to vote for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I would say that's fair. Okay, I was just asking. I didn't even say there's anything wrong with it. I was simply suggesting <laughs> more insane people on Twitch. I wouldn't dispute that for a second, honestly. Push on this wall and a push on this wall. So we get opposite bonus. And then we go full away out style here. I know that there's a, a hold in the middle, but I mean, if we could just do this instead, why wouldn't we, right? Oh. Oh, <laughs> Miss New Booty. Sorry, sorry. I'm objectifying the video game character. I'd like to apologize. I think I could do this one in real life. And I'm, I'm maybe being insane, but I don't... Well, maybe I don't believe that now that I think about it. Just going to the playground sometimes is a little humbling. Okay, big guy. <laughs> I would honestly, I, I bet I'm a, an above average rock climber within the demographic of good dads. Now I wanted to specify specifically, I'm sure there's a lot of dads who are not great, who are awesome at rock climbing. But out of the dads who are putting in like a good amount of time with their kid every day, like getting that sweat equity up and building that lifelong relationship, 
I would put my I would at least give myself a chance. That's all I'm saying. What 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 is what is what's the problem, Rachel? You're just you're literally just standing up. Rachel, you're literally just standing up. You die, you broke your neck and died. Rachel, you're just standing out. That doesn't take any stamina. Right hand up. Right foot up. Left foot up. Just gotta get it over the rock, Rachel. It's not hard. I already told you I was doing this in the in the fifth grade. Okay, this this she actually fell on her neck. <laughs> she died. <laughs> She fell 12 feet onto a boulder and died. Tragic news in the world of gaming today. Rachel, the star of indie game sensation New Heights, has passed away after, who could have foreseen it, a rock climbing accident on the second course of the game. Sources say she had to, um, after scaling a 12-foot vertical wall straight up, she had to take one step on a slightly uneven stone and she fell directly down on the top of her head. Hey, in high school gym class, did any of your friends ever open hand, open hand palm slap your belly and yell five star? No? Kids these days wouldn't last five minutes in a Modern Warfare 2 lobby. It didn't really work on me because I had belly hair in the ninth grade, so joke's on them. I genuinely was not bullied in high school. So this is just a story that I mean, like to be funny. But one time in gym class, a guy, um, well, I guess is a, a boy, because we were just in the ninth grade. He pantsed me, which is when you pull down your friend's pants in front of everybody. It's a harmless prank, as long as it doesn't traumatize you. So what he did is he threw a basketball straight up in the air and then I like reached my arms up to grab it. And when I reached my arms up to grab it, he pulled on my gym shorts and pulled them to the ground. But the problem is he got too good of a grip and he pulled down my underwear with it. So my bare ass cock and balls were just hanging out in the gymnasium. And then I went, whoop, I uh, just pulled it up. And I was like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> up to these I should call him stop this is traumatizing it was totally fine gives new meaning to the phrase keep your eye on the ball it's just male bonding In dude for the next location, oh has great news we've got a permit to climb somewhere where it's normally prohibited I know we talk about it like now and then but it's still crazy to me I did you go to a modern high school or did you go to like a 1960s high school and the, the delineation that I have for that, in the boys' locker room, did you have individual shower stalls? Or did you have one Look big room you to with 20 like shower heads of all on the perimeter of the room? The so you all anything. showered like naked right next to each other, basically facing each other. One big room? Listen. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know if everybody else had this experience, but like in the eighth grade, we got to go into the girls' locker room because we were doing like a school play or something like that. So the boys' locker room was for like the one group to get ready and the girls' locker room was for the other group to get ready. We got into the girls' locker room and we were like, what the fuck? This is what we've been missing out on the whole time. Our, the boys' locker room was like two pine benches and a prison shower and then like toilets where the doors were like this big. So you could see like someone's eyes and their shins when they were pooping. And then the girls' bathroom had like eight individual shower stalls and like laminated pine benches and lockers and stuff like that. It's crazy, man. They had like toilets, the boys' locker room just had like a fucking trough in, this, in the center of the room. They had individual sinks with mirrors. We had those circular ones where you like smash a button and 12 faucets in the circle go around. And the soap wasn't like the dispenser that you push. The soap was just like a bar with a, like a, a little rod with a bar of soap 
coming out of it. So everybody's rubbing up to the soap with their dirty hands. It's just, it's crazy, man. Did you rebel? No, you just kind of get used to it. Then when I started like working out, like in a real gym as an adult, I like, well, we, I remember talking about it with Rob. This must have been like basically 10 years ago now. People were like, you're weird for getting naked in the gym locker room. And I'm like, brother, I don't know if it's just because like I went to the YMCA with my grandpa. It, it just, you just eventually you've, you've seen enough old balls that like, you know, nobody in there really cares about your old balls. So like, if anything is weird to like not get naked in the gym locker room. Now it is weird to like, oh, what am I doing? She's dead. It is weird. It doesn't stop people from doing it, but it is definitely weird to dry your balls using the, like the hand dryer, you know, with like the metal disc that you smash. But you'll see, if you go to the gym, you'll see a lot of old men putting their balls up to the dryer and then <laughs> hitting the button. What are you saying? Go, you go to the YMCA for a month, you will see at a minimum one old man drying his balls with the dryer, okay? North America's insane. Don't, don't North America, I mean, it's just one guy. They're not insane in Europe. In Europe, people are like, oh, it work's over. Let me go sit in a 110 degree room with a bunch of other naked guys. Oh, it's not hot enough in here. Can you go put a ladle of water onto the radiator so it goes <laughs> One guy in every YMCA. Well, when I say one guy, I mean like it's not one individual. It's one type of man that doesn't... Like they're not making any more of that guy. But they made a lot in like the 1950s. Maybe even like the 1940s, to be honest with you. She can't climb this. She's not, she's not capable of climbing it. <laughs> yeah, the YMCA is a gym. I don't know. It's kind of like... She, she can't do it, man. She can't do it. She can't fucking do it. Okay, never mind. She's okay. The YMCA is kind of sick. Got a swimming pool. Cheap gym. Squash courts. You can play youth basketball there. Probably got pickleball. Don't even bother signing up if you're under the age of 60. Not because pickleball is only for old people, but because it's the only people who have time to organize pickleball are old. So that's just going to be like Tuesday at 8.15 a.m. Like you got no chance. Bro, at my YMCA, they do pickleball at 5.45 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday. You're exact. I'm telling you, man. Because I've been looking into the community center to find some stuff to do, right? If you're, a, if you're a three to five year old, the world's your oyster. Ballet lessons. Learn how to kick a soccer ball. Learn, you want to learn Chinese? Sure. You're four years old, you want to learn Chinese? 5.45 p.m. on a Friday. No sweat. What else are you doing? You're an adult and you want to get some exercise or play intramural sports? Get ready to fucking show up for 11.30 p.m. volleyball on a Monday. Or alternatively, just quit your job. And then you can play tennis once a week at 11 a.m. Like the community, I get why they do it, but the community center is like all set up for retirees to stay active. But it would be nice if they ran like a, they ran some like, you know, normie adult classes too. You ever consider playing slow pitch softball? I've been like, so I take my daughter to like the playground, right? See a lot of kids playing baseball, softball, you know, they're using the, the pitching machine, going into the batting cages and stuff like that. I gotta tell you, I have not hit a baseball. Actually in, in Korea, we used to get drunk and go to the batting cages a little bit. It was part of the culture. And I was doing pretty well on the batting cages despite being like, you know, more heights in than I'd like to admit. Hang on, hang on. Perfect, perfect. That being said, watching the kinds of pitches that like nine-year-old kids throw has made me yearn to hold one of those aluminum bats in my hands. Because like, holy cow, these kids aren't appreciating the meatballs that are getting served up. Like, the, no, nobody's throwing pitches that have any kind of movement except like a, a beautiful like parab parabolic arc. All the pitches go like this, 
like it's it's the home run is like built into the memory of the pitch. And you know, I, having played youth softball myself, there's some bats you can get like the old rusted metal ones, and then when you hit the ball, your hands are like a Looney Tunes card. You're like whoa, 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 whoa. But if you get like those new ones that are kind of like a little fatter on the end, and then they got the dimple in the top of them. I don't know what the dimple's for, but you just bruh! <laughs> just imagining myself stepping up to the plate against like a nine-year-old kid pitching for Tony's Hardware, and just oh, that that ball's not coming back, man. It's not coming back. Anyway, a man can dream or whatever. Bat lefty or righty. I'm a lefty batter, but I never played serious enough baseball to have any pitcher or coach care about like the the matchup like that. We never even like I was okay at baseball, but we never even got to the point in at least on my teams where we did anything for like fielding adjustments. The only fielding adjustment we did was like to try to get in the head of a kid. So like but if a weak-looking kid came to the bat, you'd be like, All right, everybody, move in, move in. And then he corks it over your head on a routine pop fly, but you can't get it because you moved in too much because you were trying to get in his head, and you're like, oh, fuck. Could you pitch a perfect game against a team of eight-year-olds? I think if you gave me a few, a few tries, I think I could, yeah. I don't think I could do it every game, but I think I could do it if you gave me like three games, I think I could do it. Free solo, are you crazy? Me talking, me in cosplay as uh, Luke Skywalker talking to Jabba the Hutt. Free solo, free solo. Because he's frozen in carbonite at the end of The Empire Strikes Back. Do the Jabba voice. Amazon Prime Video Free Solo, Chewbacca. <laughs> Something like that? Now Yoda? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Yoda's retired. Get it on the floor? Get it on the floor? Miss New Booty? Bring it back to me? Lady, honestly, you need to work on your core strength. That's abysmal. You, I'm not saying you deserve to die. I was going to say you deserve to die, but you don't... You don't deserve to die. Nobody deserves to die. Well, dang on. I got to think about that one for a minute. <laughs> you already killed her? I mean, she killed herself. I didn't say fly out to France and try to climb on an old-ass castle. That's her own problem. It's Belgium. Oh, okay, was it, was it Belgium when it was a castle? Or was it fucking East Francia? Was this in the domain of Charlemagne? Like, I think we're just being a little needlessly pedantic is all I'm trying to say. This guy loves saying East Francia. I know all about the post-fall of Rome history of Europe. Charles Martel, Charlemagne, Pepin the Short, Christopher the Ugly. Like, I'm, I'm very familiar. East Francia, West Francia, the other one. Probably just called, uh, if I had to guess, Central Francia. Could you rule Rome for 10 years given no experience? Yeah, that's what they all did. Honestly. I'm not... I, anybody could rule Rome for 10 years with no experience. You just gotta be the son of... Rome. Which I think is Rise. Oh, learn how to climb! Would you leave, lead your men in battle against the Goths? Well, first off, what, what gods are we talking about here? Are we talking about Ostrogoths or Visigoths? Are we talking about Vercingetorix or Odoacer? Because, like, I, no disrespect to Vercingetorix. I think I could take him. Source, Julius Caesar took him. Odoacer, that's going to be a little bit more of a problem because, I mean, he's the, he's the champ, right? Vercingetorix was a Gaul, not a Goth. I, yeah, but are you going to deny that he had Goth energy? <laughs> I feel like he was a Gaul in uh, name, but in spirit. Oh. He was serving God. How's the new streaming setup? 
Except for the fact that I'm on Wi-Fi is really sick. I'm so excited to have a fridge right next to me. I've been a little down the last couple days because I haven't been able to make it to Costco. We've been doing so much stuff like for moving. But I could probably go to Costco this afternoon. Oh, baby. I'm going to buy like 60 bubblies. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Fuck it. I might start drinking Coke Zero. I might get a flat of like uh, Keystone Light or something. I don't know. I got so much. There's just so much stuff there. It's a fridge. You guys smoke them if you got them. Get a hexagonal kokanee case from Costco. Our Costco's in BC are still not um, permitted to sell alcohol. So unfortunately, I cannot. Also, I would probably not get kokanee, but I don't know. There's a first time for everything. Sorry, don't know Wild again. Dan, could you type a little faster, please? I'm, I'm free soloing here. Do you think she's wearing Kirkland or Lululemon? Um, I mean, these are Kirkland. No disrespect to Costco, but... These are definitely not Lululemon leggings. These are some Kirkland signature. You know what would be a great tier list? Um, most annoying area, areas in Costco ranked by how annoying it is to get there or to, to travel there. Number one, without a doubt, the most annoying place to travel in Costco is around the rotisserie chickens. Especially because the rotisserie chickens usually sell out and then people are like crowding the warmer, waiting for more to come out and just abandoning their cars anywhere. Number two is anywhere where there's a good free sample. People will literally line up for five minutes to get like seven goldfish crackers. Like it's nuts. After the leaving can be pretty bad too, because you, you got to go through the warehouse to get to the cashier. And there's products that are around the cashier. But apparently some people didn't get the memo. You don't start at Costco by trying to traverse the line of people with full shopping carts leaving. You go to the end of that aisle and then you turn around and you start 180 from there if you need to get like, you know, fruit snacks or granola bars or something. And then tied for... Um, Number three through number 100 is literally anywhere else in the store because people are so fucking stupid at Costco. <laughs> and they just go like, hmm, there's something I want. And then they shove their shopping cart without even looking where it's going and just completely blocked away. Or they're like, the person in front of me is walking one microsecond slower than I'd like to go. So I'm going to block the other lane by passing them. And then by when while passing, you're like, ooh, salad topper. And then you just stand there with your cart so other people trying to get through can't go anywhere. I work there. He's so right. People just don't care, man. It's, it's me too, honestly. But like, I mean, I try to be conscientious of where I leave my cart. That being said, whenever someone's like mildly inconveniencing me, I'm like, this is crazy. What are you doing, you stupid idiot? And when... I mildly inconvenience somebody else. I'm like, bro, it's just 10 seconds. Have patience. <laughs> Dude, it's 10 seconds. What's the rush? Me, when someone makes me take two seconds out of my day. Ah! I want the foam back. I don't even want to say this. I don't want to blow up anybody's spot. But... My old office, when it was like no furniture and just foam, was echoey as hell. The foam doesn't do anything, man. I spent so long putting it up, and then when I put it up, I was like, wow, it sounds a lot better. Then when I took everything out of my room and it was just the foam, I was like, this shit's echoey as hell. People just buy it because of foam O. <laughs> Sound panels? No, I don't think so. I'd read, I don't, like, I can't. Dan, I don't know if you're in the same boat here. You might be in the opposite boat. I don't want to have sound foam in here. Because, like, I just want it to be, like, it's a house. I get that I'm a streamer as well. But I think what I'm saying, without saying it, is that the rules don't apply to me. <laughs> Rachel, grab it! 
dead. Oh. It's not, no, it's not that I'm lazy. It's just that, like, I don't care about taking a little bit of, I don't know what the unit is for echo. I don't care about taking, you know, 25% of the echo out. If I can take it out, I would like to take it out with, like, furniture or something aesthetically that looks nice. I don't want to, like, you know, control alt delete buck fuck, butt fuck my room, make it look like a fucking Overwatch character, right? It's a, it's a house. Like, I have to live here. I get that, like, I could just, at some point, I could just take the stuff down, but, like, I don't want to, I want it to be unified with, like, the rest of the house. You know what I mean? It's not that I'm ashamed of it. No, it's just I, I want it to be like... I want it to be pleasant to be inside. <laughs> I don't want it to be like, leave my like nice house and then come down to my my goon cave. My my degen hole. Like, I, don't, I, want it to, I want it to just look nice. Like, Malv is, is aspirational for me. Malv's streaming setup just looks like a person lives there and happens to stream. Malv, I gotta go to bat for you here, obviously. Dan forced my hand on this one. Dan, how does it feel to be on the wrong side of history and be, like, one of the only people on the planet that thinks Hades is bad? Hades is like you liking the Beatles, both overrated. You haven't made an argument. How, how is Hades like the Beatles? Like, we, we can't reach a... a a common ground with this. You think they're overrated? I think they're not overrated. Well, that's not true. I think Hades is a little overrated. <laughs> but I think it's extremely good. I think it's like a 10 out of 10. How do you overrate a 10 out of 10? Because in my opinion, it's not the best 10 out of 10 ever. I'm not rage baiting. I'm not rage baiting. Why didn't you play it? I fucking played like a thousand hours. I'm like, ah! So it's like a 9.8? No, it's like... It's it, it. Listen, I don't do decimal points because I'm a sane individual who has like other stuff to do. So I'm not going to get into the delineation. Oh, Ocarina of Time is a 9.8. Majora's Mask is a 9.7. Like literally, that's the same score, bro. It's not my favorite 10 out of 10. Like is Odele a 10 out of 10 album? I think there's an argument for it. Is it as good of an album as... Um, Heaven or Las Vegas by the Cocteau Twins? No, it's not. It's not. If I had to choose one album to send into the sun and one album to play like at my funeral, I know which one's going in, e in each rocket. Let's put it that way. Criteria for a 10 out of 10 um, is good. That's my, that's my rubric. Lady, you fucking weakling. Sell your gym, Rachel. I'm out. As soon as... I, I don't know. Don't sell your gym. You might be a great business owner for all I know. Don't blame Rachel, you man. Don't call me a man, okay? The truth hurts. Reminds me yesterday when I told Chibli to get used to the fact that he's old. And he said this guy literally just looked at a clock on his wall. That shit got me good. It's like the most insulting yet true thing that I been subjected to in a long time he boomed me it doesn't even like it's not even i don't even know what to I, you know what i think it's just an overpowered form of insult i think if you ever want to insult somebody you could just say you literally just thing that you just did and as long as you say it with enough confidence it will just work what time is it it's 2 p.m we gotta lose asap man because i gotta disassemble my whole office I gotta eat some lunch, disassemble my whole office, and then um, do it fast enough to pick up my daughter from daycare. Dude, really just looked at a clock on the wall. Chibli, you're not beating the old allegations, okay? Yeah, I've got a clock on my wall. I was born in 1988, all right? I, there's nothing I can do about that. You're, I've already reconciled with my age. Your ass has to deal with it the same way everybody else had to deal with it. Don't change the subject. Like, if someone's like, you're old, I could reply like, you literally just typed LOL. You're going to call me old? You literally just described the joke? Motherfucker. <laughs> you literally just... Oh, <laughs> we got your core strength! She sucks, dude. 
I'm just saying it. Mate, it's a wall. You're not a gecko. Oh. <laughs> Look at that one. That was too much. You're making her grab flat wall? I didn't make her do anything. She chose to do this. I don't know what she's missing in her life that this seemed like the sensible course of action. I guess modern life is just too comfortable. We gotta, like, you know, flirt with death every single day just for leisure. Me on my bike every day to work. So true. Me looking at 90s rock rides. Oh, let me guess. Wonderwall by Oasis, Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Semi Charmed Kind of Life by Third Eye Blind. Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. Me listening to Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. Gotta get the water jump. 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 I mean, listen. Are you, are you chilling here? If you're chilling, I, had to, I don't want to insult Ben Aldis, okay? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm, gonna, I'm going to t the ride I did today. Only one ride. I did two strength workouts before, okay? Just let me go. Today's 90s rock playlist... I don't think there's ever been a more Gen X coded ride. I want you to know that I did not enjoy riding to this, okay? This is, I want you to have sympathy for me. Track one, Under the Bridge, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Track two, What's My Age Again, Blink-182. Track three, Semi-Charmed Life by Blur. Track four, Thunderstruck by ACDC, Straight in the Wonder Wall by Oasis. Ooh. Everlong by the Foo Fighters. Smells Like Teen Spirit Remastered by Nirvana. Close it out to Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. I said Blur again, sorry. So, but Third Eye Blind, sorry, sorry. Deep Cuts, every song is a deep cut. Now let me, so that was Ben Aldis, 30 minute 90s rock ride today, okay? You ready for this? I'm going to all workouts. Ben Aldis, 90s rock ride. And then I'm looking, okay, here's his, here's one randomly picked, okay, from March 2021. This is not 90s rock, this is 90s. Okay, 90, 90s rock, this is from March 5th, 2023. You ready for this? Mysterious Ways by U2, My Hero by the Foo Fighters, All Star by Smash Mouth, Thunderstruck by ACDC, Ironic by Alanis Morissette, Don't Wanna Miss a Thing by Aerosmith, I'm Not Ready, this Song 2 by Blur. 90s Rock Ride from February. Hard to Handle by the Black Crows. Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Everlong by the Foo Fighters. What's My Age Again by Blink-182. Higher by Creed. Wonderwall by Oasis. Okay, I'm going back to another one. This one's from October 2022. Mysterious Ways by U2. Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. Give It Away by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Thunderstruck by ACDC. Everlong by the Foo Fighters. Smells Like Teen Spirit. Close It Out with Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. I'm scrolling down. Here's one from... Uh, July last year. Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. semi Chump Kind of Life. Thunderstruck by AZDC. Tub Thumping by Chumba Wumba. Learn to Fly by the Foo Fighters. Smells like Teen Spirit. It, uh, it's the same thing every time. What's the problem? I want some new oldies, man. <laughs> I want some new oldies. I mean, I'm not saying it's like similar songs every time. I mean, this guy is like literally the same song every time. <laughs> okay. This is where we always lose it. <laughs> you see the video of the old man uh, walking down the stairs at the stadium and both of her knees pop at this, or both of his knees pop at the same time and he falls over like he just got ragdolled in Gary's Mod? Sadly, I did see that one. Yeah, I think he tore like both of his ACLs like at the same time. Like he's, he's walking down the stairs. I don't know why in my head he's carrying like two buckets of popcorn. And he's just walking down the stairs and his knees just snap. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> why are you laughing? Well, like it was. <laughs> I'm laughing. Because if I saw it in a video game, I would think that it was really funny. But because it's not a video game, obviously, I hope that he's okay. I hope he's better than okay. I think he's having, the, I hope he's having the best day of his life. He probably isn't. All right, well, you know, why stop all that mansplaining? Let 
Lady? Thank you. Okay, we're, we've made it further than ever before. Who suggested this ass game? Kate, that was me. I saw it today and I said, this would be a nice change of pace. Rachel, don't. Rachel, don't. Rachel, 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 no! Okay, I'm going, what is it? It's 1117. I'm going to focus. I'm going to get up this wall. Bro, she sucks. She is not beating the inheriting a bouldering gym from her oil baron father accusations, allegations. Spinning in infinity. They say, hey, hallelujah, if you'll be my bodyguard, I will be your long lost pal. You know what I'm saying? Dan, you know this? You strike me. Dan, you strike me as the kind of guy who either loves Paul Simon or, or hates him with a passion. But can I tell you, in the inter, because I've said a lot of messed up stuff about Weezer. Last night, my daughter wanted me to sing her a song while she fell asleep. I said, do you want a Christmas song? Because she's been all about the Christmas songs lately. She said, no, I want a swimming song. Now, I couldn't think of too many swimming songs. Like, I'm not going to uh, sing, uh, you know, Swim by Surfer Blood. I was thinking maybe like Beachcomber by Real Estate. But then in my head, I said, you know what? How about this one? <clears throat> Let's go away for a while, you and I, to a strange and distant land Where they speak no word of truth, but we don't understand anywhere they far away And she loved it! Plus two, one of the three good Weezer songs. Excuse me, they have two good albums. Holiday's a good song. Favorite song on the Blue album? I don't think this is controversial. In fact, I think it... It might be so non-controversial as to be like a little bit insulting. It's like someone says, hot take, water's good for you. I'm an only in dreams guy. Disgusting. What's, what's wrong with only in dreams? It's a, it's a good one. Here's a question for you though. What's, what's the worst track on the Blue Album? And why is it Surf Wax America? Across the sea? Across the seas on Pinkerton. You Philistine, in the garage. That would be close to the bottom of my list as well. Not to say it's a bad song. The worst song on the Blue Album is still is better than being the best song on Human Clay by Creed. The Sweater Song? No, the Sweater Song is uh, it's a good song. Sorry to tell you that you're incorrect. Well, okay, I see you're, saying, you're using the same logic that I was using. The Sweater Song is not the worst song on the Blue Album. Good focusing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Rachel! <laughs> oh. Can we stop now? No, I'm going to make it. I'm just going to say it. I'm sure some people are thinking it. This shit is not safe. <laughs> safe. I know she's not that far off the ground, but I... You would not catch me doing this. There's no chance. She is the Terminator. Of course. You almost killed him. What are you doing? I saw a green. Oh, of course. I'm the Terminator. I made a mistake. Okay, go ahead, die then. <sighs> of course, I'm the Terminator. Sorry, I'm just, I'm working on my Arnold impression. I don't know, any other comedians got an Arnold impression? Little tortilla boy. Well, put that tortilla down! Classic. You guys see the new Tom Segura special yet? I thought that it was good. That's my, that's my Tom Segura review. Not great. Decent, I think, is it? Yeah, not in an insulting way. A lot of stand-up comedy that I watch on Netflix, I watch like the first eight minutes and then go, no shot, and I turn it off. Wasn't he involved in human trafficking? No, I don't think so. 
if he was involved in human trafficking, then I don't think the special was good. I think it was bad. If John Mulaney did a little human trafficking, I'd have to know the specifics of it, but Baby J was good enough that... I'm not saying I would separate the art from the artist. I would be like, fuck that guy, but Baby J was pretty good. But if Tom Segura was involved in <laughs> human trafficking, he should have done it around the release of some of his older specials, which in my opinion were better, even though this one was still pretty good. Come on, come on. Rachel! Rachel, you got, you got opposing grips! Stand-ups washed? It is kind of washed, just in the sense that, like, it's just weird, man. I still like it. Okay, th this is a new low, man. Come on. Rachel, Rachel, you just gotta take a sleep or something. <laughs> well, I'm not even talking about the, like, comedians who, like, you open with 10 minutes about, like, how weird lockdown was and then talk about, like, how much they hate cancel culture. I'm just, like, even good stand-up to some extent. You're like, I'm really paying a dude to just go up on the stage and lie to me, huh? Like, it's just, it seems like a strange medium. But some of it is still great. I also feel like <laughs> these are just opinions, okay? You don't have to agree. But I feel like something went, like in the early 2010s, stand-up was still pretty good. And then um, Nanette came back, and then every stand-up special, not every, let's not be ridiculous. We can, we can do this, Rachel, you can do this, there you go. Many stand-up specials tried to s supersede the genre and become like um, extremely artistic and, and like emotional memoirs elevated beyond the, what is normal for the form. Some of them worked out and the ones that didn't, I was like, please just tell me some jokes. I did like the, the Neil Brennan specials, I did. I like the Mike, I love the Mike Birbiglia specials. This is where things get tough. Beautiful. That's totally fine. We're trying to keep them, the, the hands pointed in opposite directions. Feet pointed in opposite directions. A new record. Okay, Rachel, this is where you gotta nut up, okay? Swing me to the right a little bit. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> no! Okay, I'm done. I'm done. All right. Goodbye. This is New Heights. <laughs> Slash marker. <laughs> new Heights. It's interesting. You know what? I was thinking maybe I would play some Super Mega Baseball, actually. But that's going to be tough because I have to re-download Super Mega Baseball. And I'm on Wi-Fi. So let's see, this might kind of destroy the stream for a minute, but that's okay, we're in the inter-marker spaces. Let me, I saw Justin playing. And Ju Justin is such an inspiration, man. He plays the game and he like wins and he's like, I did good. And then he loses and he's like, oh, who cares? I wish I could do that. Hey, Anel, I'm a sous chef at a high-end steak and seafood restaurant and need to come up with a special for this weekend. What should you order slash recommend to someone when going to a restaurant? Hmm, that's an interesting question. A sous chef at a high-end steakhouse. What would be a good special? I feel like you're going to already have the classics on your menu. So what you should do for a special is throw in something a little bit... Like, here's the thing. Most people going to a steakhouse, my personal, my two cents here, are going rarely. So they're probably going and they're saying, I'm going to get the ribeye. I'm going to get the, the tenderloin or something like that. You know, they're, get, they're, they're going to get their best, their favorite cut. They know they're going to spend on it. And you can't deviate from that. But I think what you should offer is something that for people that go to a steakhouse often 
maybe like some kind of like a steak with a, a, a slightly unusual sauce. A steak Diane, for example. I think it's a great answer. Do an app appetizer special with a steak tartare. How about, how about a... Um, How about a, a table side Caesar salad? <laughs> By the way, I, I love a good steak. I don't go to a steakhouse. You know what? We should start like this slash marker SMB4. I love a steak. I don't really go to a steakhouse. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's an easy answer. Um, I don't go to a steakhouse because. As much as I love a steak, I don't think it's worth $63. I know that that's the price. It, it's reflective of how much you pay for the beef and then what you do to the beef and your skills as a chef and the restaurant itself. I'm not necessarily saying it's overpriced. All I'm saying is I am unwilling to pay the fair price <laughs> that it costs. <laughs> Now, I will say, when I go to a steakhouse, I have already decided pre-going there that I'm not going to worry as much about the price. The time to worry about the price from the steakhouse is before you go. If you're not going to spend steakhouse money, go to a different restaurant, which is what I choose to do. You might say buy beef from the grocery store, but I don't even buy steaks from the grocery store anymore. I'm not willing to, play, to pay grocery store prices for steaks these days. I'll, I'll take some chickpeas or something like that. But if you've decided to go to the steakhouse, you don't cheap out once you get there. If you're forced to go, sure, that you can worry about it then. But if you're, it's your friend's birthday and you don't want to go to the steakhouse because the beef is too expensive, but it's his birthday, you go, okay, I'll take the chopped salad or something. But if I go there, yeah, I'll take the ribeye. I'm not going to go there and then be like, give me a small New York strip. Like, what am I doing at this? I'd rather pay $63 for something delicious if I'm already going to an expensive restaurant than pay like $47 for something that's not that good and then be like, oh, I should have just put the extra 16 bucks in for the ribeye, man. Holy cow, I've had such infrequent plus twos. This is the most plus twos I've gotten in forever. Repeating the same opinion for two minutes. Yeah, but I'm... Because I'm looking, trying to find a game. It's Tuesday at 11.43 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> I, need, I need to keep the banter warm while I... Oh, found game. Sing it faster. Whoa. Are you listening? I, 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 a new streamer just dropped. Guy who mutes, mutes the music in the game because it's DMCA and then sings DMCA music over the top. Is it reasonable to go to a steakhouse and get the chicken? I think you could do whatever you want. But I also think that you... I think it's a little weird, but I think it's, it depends on why you went to the steakhouse to begin with, okay? Maybe you went because your friend wanted steak and you didn't want steak, so you got chicken. Maybe you went and then you decided that the chicken was the best looking thing on the menu. That's fine. You see the names of, of all of his players? Like, what, what the hell is B.A. Sanguinius? This from Warhammer 40K? Holy cow. Well, in many ways, baseball is the Warhammer. Good pitch, good pitch. Never mind. Baseball is the Warhammer of sports. In what ways? It's uh, long. Nerds love it. And old British people. I don't know if British people love baseball. Well, they love cricket. That's like the same thing. What a, what a horrible swing. No, we don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I don't know how to bunt. <laughs> Just get it to the outfield, brother. He's, he's done an infield adjustment. He's adjusting his infield for bunting, but I'm not bunting again. I just said, I just said I don't know how. I'm the best player of all time. Oh, the pitcher tripled. <laughs> the pitcher tripled, brother. Make him work for it. He's not going to be able to throw too many pitches. 
He got me in the double play. I got to hand it to He got me in the single play, and I scored a run. I got to hand it to me. I would call that a, a fielder's error. <clears throat> I knew that it was going to be a fastball. You got one... You got a 103 mile an hour fastball, you're throwing it. Good pitch, good pitch. Right on the hands, did we get there? Oh, we got there. Might as well try for the other one. Oh! Oh! Now, a solo shot would have been crazy, but I'll take the stand up double. It's Sakta. If we lose this one, it's definitely not your fault, okay? You, you've batted a thousand this game, literally. All I, would, all I want to see is perfect contact. And that, okay. Well, you know what? We can't be mad. I wish there was a good game button. I would like to say good game to my opponent. We both played a very solid one there. Is NL one of those I want to shake your hand dudes? Not at all. <laughs> There's a... Um, a bit of a sussing out period that happens when you meet a new person. If you meet a middle-aged man, the odds are they will probably want to shake your hand. But they will also probably want to offer first. So you, you just have to respond to their entente. When you're meeting somebody else, it depends. You got to see if this person seems like a handshaker or a non-handshaker. I met my neighbor. Um... He gave me a handshake that I felt like I it was one of those guys. I don't think he gave me a handshake that was like designed to crush my hand. I think that he was just really strong. And when he shook my hand, I was like, you could crush every bone in my hand if you wanted to. I got it. I think if you work with your hands, you have like a distinct advantage. Like you don't know how strong you are. Like two people can look the same, but their strength even when they look like they have similar musculature, their strength could be very different. Like, I might be getting some decent forearms from doing some weightlifting, but I mean, you're, listen, brother, you're not, if, if you built your forearms with Zotman curls versus building your forearms from like running a bakery for 22 years, it's a very marked difference in the output of your, of your musculature. Hockey pivot? Brother, if they ever make a super mega hockey, I'm going to be the CEO of hockey, okay? There's a gap in the market. Tape to tape is a great game. That's not, that's not super mega hockey. There's no franchise mode. There's no online multiplayer. Tape to tape is a great game. It's just too easy. If you're me. I do know that Bo Horvat is no longer on the uh, Canucks. It's true. Did you also see that he was ranked uh, number sixth in the top 10 worst contracts in the NHL now? No disrespect, Islanders. I'm rooting for you in some ways because your jerseys are blue and orange, which are great colors. But um, is it eight years, eight and a half million? Well, well, well soon the salary cap's going to go up, so it's not going to... It's okay to over, overpay for mid-players because the salary cap's going to go up soon and save us. Okay, Lula Morello. For a second-line center... Bro, bro, please, bro, bro. He's cracked on face-offs. I know he's cracked on face-offs. So what? He needs someone to pass it to. Actually, that doesn't, that's not even true because Bo Horvat doesn't really pass. I liked him when he was on the Canucks, but his, his big move is carry the puck like a freight train into the offensive zone and then just try to score by himself. One in eight times he scores, and then the other seven of eight, he misses the net and you lose possession. But honestly, for the NHL, one in eight is pretty good. Single-handedly, he helped us beat St. Louis in the, in the bubble playoffs. I'm just spitballing because we don't have a, a player to play yet. <laughs> Thoughts on Michkov? I have no idea. I love when, like, 22-year-olds online get mad or super excited about who their team drafted as if they like know anything about junior hockey, especially in like uh, Scandinavia. Well, I thought the Canucks did a pretty good job by taking uh, Jonathan Lekem, Lekker, Lekeramaki. I think that's it. <laughs> 
It's a bit of a reach, but I watched, I watched a lot of games in the Swedish Elite League this year, and I honestly thought that he was one of the best players that I... Uh, and, but at the same time, I wish that we had taken Angelo Esposito instead because we, he went into this season as like the consensus number two pick, but then he fell to number 15, but he has name recognition. So I think that we could have gotten the value of a number two pick at number 15, and surely I know something that the general managers don't know, uh, and that's why I know why they're not picking him, but we should pick him anyway. Can you find me an opponent, please? Here's, here's the change. If you found me an ass opponent, somebody who, they're 12 beers deep, they, the game's been on their wish list for a month and they decided today's the day. They're off from work. They're 41 years old. <laughs> Give me that person. Oh! <laughs> it's nobody. It's somebody. It's Mogi Ravioli who has made the New York Mets and then it's a beard smoking a bat. <laughs> The rating is 4437. <laughs> no. His ELO is 800 points higher than the last guy who beat you 8 0. Yeah, but his ego is also higher, so my fastballs are going to be coming in hot. You know what? We, you're absolutely right. We're rooting for um, our 11th game in a row without forfeiting. Oh, he checked his swing. I'm fucked. <laughs> he's not swinging at this. Oh, no, dude. He's crazy. One out, one out. Oh! <laughs> Good start. He's not swinging at that. What if I threw exactly the same pitch again? <laughs> one of these days I'll figure out how to, how to stop the steal. I mean, phrasing. <clears throat> Not grounding out into a double play, sorry. Go, go, Charlie! Oh, I had to adjust my base running real quick. I, I hit every button in the in the button box. I hit every single button. No steals. Oh no! <laughs> Please, please. Yes! A power swing home run for the first time in history. Sakta, do it again. Oh, do you see the velocity on that? Warm lighting. Yo, Jay, hello, it's baseball. Jay, it's baseball. I don't know why, like, that's my new thing. When, oh, fuck. He says, hang on, I gotta focus. I love baseball, open parentheses, video games. Never has a truer statement ever been stated. I also love baseball video games. You think baseball video... Uh, and I'm not... Like, if you like baseball, go enjoy it. I'm glad you got something for you. I, that sounds condescending. I don't mean it that way. It's just not for me. Maybe one day. That's so catchable. But is there a bigger gulf in quality between a sport and its video game than baseball? Like, even if you think hockey sucks, hockey video games have also been kind of ass for, like, a long time. Golf? Golf? Golf's interesting, right? Because I think it's very fun to play in real life. I personally think it's boring to watch, but it is very fun to play in video games. Hockey, I personally would not want to play in real life. In my current physical condition plus age plus relative lack of experience. I would go skating, no problem. I'd love to go skating, but... Uh, I don't. I don't think I could receive a pass right now. What do you think about the ultimate frisbee game? A U D L 
2023, I could have caught that, man. There's an ultimate Frisbee game. Wait, I don't want an ultimate Frisbee game. It sounds interesting. I don't think I want it. I think what I want... Oh, he almost snagged it. Oh my God, he psyched me out. Okay, he's just eating it. Eat this. <laughs> what? <clears throat> I think what I want um, is a disc golf game. The temptation to have your pitcher ver pitch a full game versus the obvious play to just send in your closer. Do is my catcher okay? Did you see? Here? <laughs> My man's was going Dua Lipa mode. Ooh. This is a horrible pitch, but imagine. Oh, baby, what a game. What a game. Run off the field, Matthew Kachuk style. Insane game. Well played. Sack the song. The, the, the number of games that Sack the song has gone three for three is out of control. Five innings pitch, three hits and a walk. Did I miss Puck Doku? Oh, I haven't done it today. <laughs> Hang on. You know what? That's a great idea. Because it takes 20 minutes to get into a game. Montreal and Nashville. Shea Weber. That's your given. Vesna Trophy winner on Boston, Tuka Rask. I mean, there's a, a, a hundred. Vesna Trophy winner on Philadelphia, Bernie Perrant. Vesna Trophy winner on Montreal. I mean, listen, it's the was the given, but you could also go with the Jose Teodor. You could go with the Carey Price. I can't believe this guy's at 18%. That's crazy. Now, let me... Some of these are not in my wheelhouse, okay? Like Steve Sullivan is in... Sergey Samsonov. Joe Thornton. Well, you can really see how good the logo is here. Montreal and Minnesota. Devontae smith Pelly. I don't know that many players who have ever played for Minnesota. That's the problem. <laughs> now, these have a lot of overlap. That's a given. There was a great defenseman who definitely played for both of you. And he's from the Czech Republic or Slovakia. And his name is kind of like Skrastins, but I know it's not Skrastins. It's another guy. He was really good. <laughs> oh. I don't know it. I honest, I'm, I'm, I can picture him in my head. Kevin Fiala. Ryan Hartman, musical guest, Merrick Zidlicki. <laughs> it's not Merrick Zidlicki. I know Zidlicki played for you, but did you play for you? I don't think so. But I know it's a... <clears throat> Ron Hextall. Danny Briere. Simone Gagne. Kimo Timonen, that's the dude. Oh! <laughs> ah, I got it. Was like Flyers players, Flyers players. Kimo Timonen, I got there. Okay, hang on. I gotta see if, if Super Auto Pets or sorry, if Super Mega Baseball found me a game. Ah! Oh, perfect timing. Okay. Shouldn't be too hard. This guy's a senior. <laughs> oh, wait, it's baseball. Oh. Me when I'm in an appreciating baseball competition and my opponent is old. Ooh. Come on, I'm going to make you throw a strike at least. Oh, God, it's still going. <laughs> hold, hold, hold. Look at his power, bro. They got a new pitcher. Buzz past him. Oh, he's not. He, we got a bunt, brother. Look, do you see his, how demoralized he got? <laughs> I just had nothing. I had nothing. 
That's fine. Number 19. I'm not going to third. Hold a second. No reason to get greedy. Work your way through the. Oh, take the mo pitcher's mojo down a little bit. He's on neutral. At least Rick is not going to start our next inning and thus ruin our mojo. My connection! It's a good pitch. It's a good pitch. Oh, pitcher home run! Pitcher home run! <laughs> I'm not skipping the replay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> And we're back to the top of the order. Buzz is tense. Okay, that's a little Wi-Fi related. That's fine. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Eight to three. That's a big one. How's my pitcher feeling now? He's back to neutral, baby. Oh, that's a crushable hit. So crushable. It screwed up my camera a little bit. Oh my God! Is there anything he can't do? <laughs> to be fair, Rick Ankeel actually did turn into a power hitter after he got the yips and couldn't pitch anymore. I love that for him. He finished up as a position player after he got career-ending yips. It's all right, that's their pinch hitter. Trevor Lawrence, no! He's gonna... He's going to Lawrence me. He says it's Lawrencing time. And Lawrence all over everybody. In the dirt. Swinging some shit in the dirt. Oh! You can't be afraid to make that play. Now, the second base, number 23. now it's just a normal dude pitching. Oh, that's at least up in the green monster. <laughs> Woo! Oh! Huge. And he swung at it. So we throw an even worse pitch. Just checking. Then we come back with one that looks like that, but is actually a curve that dips out of the zone. Beautiful. And, I mean, sack the song doesn't get any more clutch than that. Then give him the same pitch. Maybe he thinks it's a fastball. He gets greedy, gets cocky. Okay, he doesn't want it. We'll give him a four-seamer up and, up and high. Ooh, the Christopher Nolan ball. Off-speed changeup that pitch tunnels. Don't even have to worry about that one. Okay. Troy Percival. Just keeping you honest, kid. I'm just gonna sit you with one of these. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw you some heat for once. Oh! It's hard to hit those, brother. And then now that you caught one of those, catch one of these. Now that you caught one of those, catch one of these. Good game. Look at my rating! <laughs> I'm crazy! Three for three with a homer, a 2B, a 3RBI, 2R, one for two HR, 2RBI, R, one for two RBI, 2R, 2SB. <laughs> Have I been placed? That's five games, right? <gasps> oh, we've been placed in the semi pro category. It's me and nobody that I recognize. Seems like my mic stand is not here. Oh no. So I think I have to hold my mic to stream. Mahjong Souls. One-handed Mahjong Souls. If my left hand is gonna die. Don't, don't worry about taking that. My stream's over in 23 minutes. I'll, I'll move it out. You don't, you don't have to do moving while the stream is ongoing. I don't want the gold play button to be in the uh, shot. That's why I've moved it three times. I don't. Maybe three times. I don't want because what I'm worried about is it's going to reflect something sensitive that I don't want to show. I like to maintain a matte finish on the 
on the area behind myself. Well, your head is not... Yeah, but there's nothing I can do. I, I, and I, I streamed without a face cam for like 27 years. That's a perfect blooper single. Ooh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Anton, go for power. Good pitch. Great. Painted the corner. I could have taken it, though. Oh, right through the oh, legs. He's dead. <laughs> he's not making it home. I got to load the bases. <laughs> Sakta. Just pitch for contact. That's not my pitch. Sakta just hits. He doesn't need the grand slam. Oh, that's, you got to be careful with that one. Okay, fuck it. Go for the grand slam. I'll take it. That's a big one. That's a big one. So what do you, you think you're going to play Mahjong with uh, one hand on the microphone the whole time? Yeah, I got no chance. You should tell the chat your, your idea of how to stream with like not holding the mic. Oh, I thought it was a pretty good idea, but Kate made fun of me. So all these... Hang on, this is an important situation. Ooh! Basically, I said, why don't you take your mic arm and basically run it up the length of your spine and then drape the mic arm over your head like Death Stranding and then just have the mic hanging like overhead. But she... Apparently, that's not a good idea. Apparently. Apparently, I've never been on oh, live television before. That was Wi-Fi. I'm going to just say it. That's Wi-Fi. Don't throw a temper tantrum, brother. You already got the yips. Like, isn't it? Your life's hard enough. The hell was that? He's going. Oh! <laughs> we got the strike. We got the out. You talking about me or the pitcher? <laughs> the pitcher. <laughs> Huge. Huge. Oh, and then a change up. So-called pitch tunneling. Oh! Because <laughs> <What was that? laughs> it's incredible. What I just did to him was, was devious. That's great. Oh, I, I would have swung. Just being honest, I would have swung. Oh! You wrecked it! Oh, oh, oh man. What is this lighting? See, this is why the streaming industry, you can tell it's lost its way. Back in the day, it was just a dude in a room playing Earthbound. Oh. Using a, a $9 microphone that they bought at Best Buy. Everyone said this is life-changing content. Now a streamer moves house. People said, what the heck's up with this lighting? It's not even professionally lit. Like, wait, what, what are you talking about? Hang on, I gotta hit a home run real quick. Sakta? Sakta, don't miss! We take those. I don't swing for balls, I suck on them. Okay. Okay. Hang on, I'm going to meditate on that one for a minute. Hang on, we need to make a decision here. Rob and you, I need, I need Dick Burger, and we're going salami. Oh, <laughs> that was not early, it was gone. It's got to be in the zone, brother. It's power, but I think he got me on a good pitch. Okay, credit where credit is due. He played a great game. I also got rating points up, which seems bad. Still GG, though. Sack, sack the song, two for two. Was that my sack the? I thought Sancta was like a... I thought he was like a one for four that game. Maybe that was last game. Chibli, we're back. We brought the Super Mega Baseball back. 
Chibli, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me, Chibli. What's your rating? Is it, is it above or below 3802? 2700? No comment. That's like a, a New Zealand 3800. Not because people in New Zealand are bad at things, but because New Zealand doesn't have like baseball culture, right? I was getting roasted in Chibli's chat, by the way. And literally all I said is, can I say something without people getting mad? What I said was, I don't really understand when people like get a drink and food in a coffee shop and then they just like sit in the coffee shop. Like every once in a while, I'll need a coffee outside of the house at like, you know, 2 p.m. I'm like, I'm tired. I get a coffee and then I don't sleep until 2 a.m. But like I get it and I go somewhere. I go for a walk or something like that, or, you know, continue on with the stuff that I got to do in my day. But like, what are you doing with your, what are you doing? In a, it, it just doesn't appeal to me to like order something in a mug and then sit down on a, at a table and like look at my phone while I drink it. You want me to take a walk with my croissant? That's what I usually do. I get the croissant in like the little wax paper bag and then I just go outside and I walk and I eat it. Usually it's, de it's eaten by the time I get to the first public garbage can. Good for you. I'm just saying like, I, I'm not saying we should shut down all the coffee shops. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't get it. Sit down and read a book? No. What did Chivley say? It was funny. <laughs> you have to watch on the librarian's end to see that it was Chibli that said that. It's not that I'm like, oh, I'm so busy. I got to go, 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 go. It's just like when I sit down, it's hard to explain. When I sit down, I'm like, I could be doing something. I don't, unless I'm actually tired, I don't get restored from sitting down. Or noticeably restored, at least. If I, like, we've been moving. There have been times where I've just sat in the chair and been like, whew, that was a long day. But if I'm just, like, living my life, I would rather be up than down. I can relax. I'm good at relaxing. I find it relaxing to take a walk. And unlike a lot of people in chat, I'm, you know, well equipped enough that I can drink a coffee and, you know, use my feet to move at the same time. Not everyone's a workaholic. Apparently going for a walk instead of sitting down makes you a workaholic now. No wonder society is so fucked up. Walking is work now. Yeah, maybe if you're like the postman, apparently sitting in a cafe makes you sedentary. I didn't accuse anyone of being sedentary. I just said, I don't get it. And then people started throwing out the mental illness accusations at me. Well, movie theater is different. If the cafe played new movies, then I would occasionally get a coffee and sit down and watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny or something like that. But I would definitely not just go there and then like sit down and like read the newspaper or something like that. That's crazy. Cafes have the radio. Did I hit a time vortex? Is it like 1931? I'm trying to catch a briefing and like what's going on in the, in the war? You should appreciate the little things. You should appreciate a damn walk. Apparently, apparently, if you love walking, you're not valid. Only people that love sitting are valid. You can walk in the cafe. I tried, but they kicked me out. They said I was making everybody else anxious. And I said, that's their problem. And they said, get out of my store. Both are valid. That's what I'm saying. All I said was, I don't get it. <laughs> if you smoked weed, you would get it? Maybe. But if, doesn't smoking weed make you love walks even more? Like, sometimes I'm out and about at like 7, 15 a.m., if you see someone at 7.15 a.m. and they're walking, they either have a dog or a joint. There's just, 
choose your fighter. You could have both. I don't think that it makes you an irresponsible dog owner. I love getting high and riding my bike. No comment. <laughs> Say, I, I see a hundred of you every day and I'm doing my best not to kill you with my car. <laughs> I'm doing my best to, to see how red your eyes are when you come to the stop sign and whether or not you're going to respect it. When I see someone in a, in a full bib and it's 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, I'm like, they're not stopping at the, at the stop sign. It's king of the mountain. I get it. Sometimes I see somebody with no shirt on and swim trunks, and I'm like, I think they, I just got to give them a little extra space. I'm on the bike trails. Don't worry. That's no problem. Then go, go for it. No problem. Probably. I mean, you could get hurt, but whatever. You know, it's, I'm sure it's pretty, pretty enjoyable. You can get hurt doing lots of things. By the way, I, I, my wife is ready to stream, so I'm going to send you over there. But like, I know I talked about this before. Pet peeve while driving. It's been happening a lot lately. I am turning right onto a busy street. Cyclists are on my car's right. I give them space because I know when we get the green light, they get the right of way to go straight before I get to turn right. I give them enough space so they can be like four abreast. Car behind me decides, why is this guy turning right, but he's not as close to the sidewalk as possible? And as soon as the cyclist goes straight, he sidles up to my right and cheats the right hand turn wondering he's like why why is this idiot in the middle of the road when he's turning right and i'm like so the first time it happened it happened two times in two days last week okay the first time it happened i said whatever bozo do as soon as we got to the next stoplight dude was on his phone and i'm like must be hard being an idiot the second time dude tried to sidle up i turned super sharp not sharp enough to cause a collision but sharp enough to be like you're not getting through here, buddy. Sorry. And then I turned and I was looking at him in the rearview mirror, like, pay attention. Anyway. He, but he was probably on his phone, too, so who cares? Anyway, I'll send you over to my wife's stream. Enjoy yourself. I will see you. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. It went, dude, it streamed fine on Wi-Fi today. That's crazy. Let's go. Who needs a cat six chord? Komodo Town. Who just took out Komodo Town? I just got downed. You know, revived me. Now we're heading eastbound. Now we're at the gates of Canada. See the boss and kill him later. Take me to Canada. Wanna kill the boss? Stop the Mongol invasion. And lives been lost. I really want to. Tsushima with you. You could be the ghost of Tsushima, the ghost of Tsushima.